If you follow the news of blockchain and Ethereum, you probably heard of DeFi. DeFi, also called decentralized finance or open finance, is about reinventing traditional finance on the blockchain. If you are a blockchain developer, you need to know about DeFi because more and more blockchain companies need this skill. At the time of recording this video, the total value locked in DeFi blockchain project is quickly approaching 1 billion US dollar and it's increasing quickly. So in this video, I'm going to give you a high level overview of what is DeFi. And at the end of the video, I'm going to explain how you can build your own DeFi project. Hey, I'm Julian and on my channel, Eat the Blocks, I teach blockchain development and how to become a blockchain developer. Before we talk of DeFi, let's try to understand the problem that is solved here. As you're probably aware, financial services are not really good at innovation. If you look at the website of your bank, it probably suck. Because there are a lot of barriers to entry for newcomers, this industry hasn't had any incentive to improve themselves. There was a first attempt at making services better with fintech. Companies like Stripe, PayPal kind of improved the situation, but the core problem is that the data is really held by banks and they're really not willing to create any API so that ecosystem can be built on top of them. DeFi wants to go much further than fintech and really make finance accessible to everybody. The big difference between DeFi and traditional finance is that in DeFi services live inside smart contract on the blockchain. And so there is no centralized third party that can do any sort of censorship or take some arbitrary decision. Another difference is that with DeFi, users are in control of their funds thanks to their private keys. Another difference is governance. So with DeFi project in general, there isn't any single person or entity that control the whole project, but we have what we call on-chain governance. That means that if we want to do any change to the DeFi project, we need to create a vote and token holder will be able to vote if they, are, if they agree or disagree with the decision. DeFi mainly happens on the Ethereum blockchain, but it's possible that in the future, all the blockchains start to develop their own DeFi industry. So DeFi looks great, but is it a fad? Well, you need to understand that Ethereum was already focused on finance even before the word DeFi was created. So it doesn't matter if this word DeFi exists or not, most of the project that you will see on Ethereum will be about finance one way or another. There are four main categories of DeFi project. First, you have lending and borrowing. So you used to be able to have rate up to 20% and that's what made DeFi really famous. Nowadays, it's more like around 10% and you can check a website called LoanScan to have a list of the different rates available on the market. The next category is decentralized exchanges. So with decentralized exchanges, you can trade ERC20 or ERC721 token in a decentralized way in a smart contract. The next category is derivatives. Derivatives are sophisticated financial product whose value derive from another asset. There are many different use cases for derivatives. The most famous one are options, futures, and also bettings on real-world events. And the last category is payment system. An example of that is sidechains that allow you to transfer Ether or token very quickly and very cheaply. So now that we know the main categories of project, let's see some specific example of DeFi projects. As a side note, I will just give a quick explanation for this project, but in the next videos of this series on DeFi programming, I will explain them in more detail. The stablecoin DAI is the foundation of many DeFi projects. At any time, one DAI equals one US dollar. DAI are secured by a collateral. Before, in the previous version of DAI, the only collateral that you could provide was Ether, but now you can also provide many kinds of Ethereum tokens. The value of these collateral assets is always superior to the value of DAI tokens that were emitted. There is a mechanism to monitor the value of the collateral in the DAI system so that if it falls below a certain threshold, your DAI token will be converted to the collateral. This way you are guaranteed of the value of your DAI tokens. One of the most famous DeFi projects is called Uniswap. Uniswap is a decentralized exchange for Ethereum tokens. So with Uniswap, you can buy and sell any sort of Ethereum token in a decentralized way via a smart contract. 
Uniswap isn't the first decentralized exchange on Ethereum, but the big difference with other decentralized exchanges is that you have two groups of users. The first one is liquidity providers, and second one is traders. For example, if you are a liquidity provider for a certain YAS20 token, then you need to provide a certain amount of this YAS20 token as well as some Ether. Then for traders, for example, if I'm a trader and I want to buy this S20 token, then I will provide some Ether to the smart contract and I will withdraw from the pool of EAS20 token. That means that the pool of Ether of the smart contract will go up and the pool of EAS20 token will go down. The price of the EAS20 token is determined by an algorithm inside the smart contract so that we keep the pool of Ether and EAS20 token balanced. Compound allows you to borrow and lend tokens on the blockchain in a decentralized way. The way it works is if you want to borrow a token A, then you need to provide as a collateral some token B. The value of collateral tokens that you provide need to be superior to the value of token that you're gonna borrow. At any time, if the value of your collateral token falls below a certain threshold, then your position is going to be liquidated. That means that your collateral tokens will be converted to the tokens that you borrowed and this will be given back to the lenders. The big advantage of this system is that you don't need to provide any credit history. If you have enough collateral, you'll be able to borrow some other tokens. The disadvantage of this is that you already need to have some asset in order to use this system. Like for Uniswap, there is also a concept of liquidity pool. So lenders don't directly lend to borrowers, but it goes through a liquidity pool. And when you take a loan, there isn't any duration. You can decide to reimburse your loan at any time in the future, as long as you keep enough collateral on the platform. Another cool project is called Gnosis. Gnosis is a system that allows you to bet on real life events. So with Gnosis, you create so-called conditional tokens and depending on the outcome of a future event, in the future, you'll be able to redeem these conditional tokens against certain collaterals like Ethereum tokens or Ether. The way you can connect this system with the outside world is by using oracles. I'm not gonna dive too deep in how Oracle works, but basically Oracles are outside API that monitor certain real life events, like the outcome of a certain sport game, and they're gonna report this outcome to a smart contract inside the blockchain. And after that, the Gnosis smart contract will be able to read the Oracle smart contract on the blockchain and depending on the value that was reported from outside the blockchain, then it will uh, make certain conditional token uh, worth uh, something or not. So I know that this is a very quick explanation, but I'm gonna explain in more details in future videos in this series how Oracle work. But in the meantime, if you're interested in this, you can check out the documentation of the Oracle for MakerDAO Oracles, cause these are kind of the reference in the industry. So what are the advantages of DeFi over traditional finance? Well, first as users, it's open to everyone. There is no KYC procedure, so if you're a user and you want to use any DeFi project, all you have to do is connect to the smart contract and no government entity is going to block you. There have been cases of some DeFi project that block some user from their web frontend, but it doesn't actually block users who really want to use the smart contract because in this case, all the user needs to do is just to create another front end that connects to the smart contract, but the smart contract itself is absolutely unable to block these users. Another advantage is that DeFi projects are censorship free. Because they are non-custodial, which means that end user actually control their fund with their private key, there isn't any centralized entity that can arbitrarily decide to freeze the funds of a certain user. Another advantage of DeFi is that it's totally transparent. All the data is inside smart contract in the blockchain and it's available for everybody to see. Another advantage is that the DeFi projects are very easily composable. So you can assemble them like Lego bricks. So you can take the output on, of one DeFi project and inject it as an input of another DeFi project. You are free to do absolutely everything you want. Everything is in smart contracts. You don't have to ask the permission of anyone to use their API. It's all in the blockchain for you to use. Another big advantage of DeFi compared to traditional finance is that it can innovate really fast. And the reason for that is that there is no regulation. 
So DeFi is great, but there are also a couple of disadvantages. And the biggest one is the fiat to crypto on-ramp are not that easy to use. So if you have some uh, US dollar, it's not that easy to use this uh, US dollar in DeFi. First, you need to convert this US dollar into Ether and maybe that you need to convert Ether uh, into DAI. So that's really one of the major problems. And the other big problem is usability. A lot of the front-end for DeFi projects are not so easy to use and also you have to connect them to wallets, so that's not very intuitive for new users. So a very legitimate question to ask is, will DeFi replace traditional finance? Well, we have to accept the fact that the large majority of the world economy is still in fiat, it's not in crypto. Also, the older generation probably won't jump to DeFi so easily. Most of the new users of DeFi are young people in their 20s. So most likely what we will see in the future is that traditional finance and DeFi will coexist, but the growth of DeFi will be much higher than traditional finance. So if you want to expose yourself to this growth, that's really a good idea to get into DeFi now. So as a blockchain developer, how can you get involved in DeFi? Well, there are two ways. The first and easiest way is to build on top of already existing DeFi project. For example, you can build a new front end for a DeFi project that doesn't have a good front end and it can make it easier for users to access the smart contract. You can also aggregate several DeFi projects into a unified front end. For example, that's what Instadap did and they were really successful at it. A really good idea would be to lurk on the Reddit of different DeFi projects and see what are the complaints of users and then you'll be able to build a front end that solve the problem of these users. The other way to get into DeFi as a blockchain developer is to build your own DeFi project. A great way to do this would be to look in the world of traditional finance and see what is not working and how you can make it better on the blockchain. In the next videos of this series, we'll dig much deeper in DeFi and I'll show you how you can integrate with existing DeFi projects. So make sure to watch this whole series on DeFi programming. I'll see you there.